Hey Dooski guys, it's Fellow 34 back here with another episode of Super Science. With Legends of Tomorrow returning back to the CW, we'll also see the return of the literal hot-headed hero, Firestorm. Now, contrary to what his name would have you believe and what you see on TV, his powers are actually based in the chemical rearrangement of atomic and subatomic structures. This episode of Super Science, we're actually going to be tackling the powers of Firestorm and transmutation. Time to get into the, uh... Super science. So when looking at Firestorm, all the previous incarnations of the character, they're pretty much basically living, existing nuclear reactors. Inside of them, there are a variety of chemical reactions between inorganic compounds constantly going on at the same time. It's these active reactions that produce the type of fire that manifests on his head and hands, which is actually more of a nuclear energy than a pyrokinetic one. Now onto his ability to transmutate. Nuclear transmutation in this context would be the conscious ability of Firestorm to change the atomic structure of his body at will. So taking a look at stable atoms, they can actually be transformed into radioactive atoms by the bombardment of high-speed particles. For example, nuclear physicists working at reactor sites can break apart uranium atoms to give a small nuclei of other elements like xenon and strontium and yes, even heat, which can be all used to generate electricity. The original nuclear reaction was conducted by Lord Rutherford in 1919, where he converted a nitrogen nucleus of a high-speed helium nucleus into an oxygen nucleus with hydrogen as a proton. One of the keys to this are the isotopes. See, an element is defined by the number of protons in its nucleus. For example, hydrogen has one and oxygen has eight. When taking a look at isotopes, they're actually determined by the number of neutrons on a regular element. The protons and neutrons are equal numbers, but isotopes vary in their neutron amount. So let the alchemists rejoice because you can technically turn lead into gold. However, you'll need the time, the money, the particle accelerator, and a lot of energy and like really low hopes as to how much gold you can even make. Now, how would this be possible for Firestorm to do this from his own body? Well, the human body is predominantly made up of organic compounds like oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and carbon, though there actually are trace amounts of inorganic compounds like chromium, tin, iron, and copper in the body, but there probably isn't enough for him to draw upon singularly. So in order for Firestorm to channel his nuclear energy, he clearly must be drawing upon his body's high count organic compounds and using the nuclear energy to transmute them into other elements that can be used for whatever task is necessary at the time. This is really interesting because that means out of all the metahumans, Firestorm actually absorbed a majority of the nuclear energy produced by the particle accelerator. Since his body basically acts as one, it can actually perform and conduct nuclear transmutation all on its own. Believe it or not, but it can actually draw on elements in the air, like the trace amounts of argon and nitrogen. Considering that different inorganic compounds burn in different colors, you might actually be able to tell what elements are being used to channel the fire surrounding him at any time. Since he's orange most of the time, we can conclude that he's probably using a fair amount of calcium chloride. And that is the super science behind Firestorm and nuclear transmutation, guys. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the Hyper Network if you have not already. Also, feel free to check out my channel, Fable34, in the description down below. What did you guys think? Let us know in the comment section down below as well. As always, I'm your host, Fable34. This is Super Science, and you just got educated. I'll see you guys next time.